All right, this is called Pinched Magnolias. Dahlia brought the butt of her shotgun to her shoulder. Everything was damp, clammy, and the air smelled of blooming magnolias and churned up swamp bed, sweet and earthy all at once. Her husband stood, grinning, on the edge of her property where water met land. He spread his arms, palms towards God, and shrugged a little. Bud was a large man, wide, tall. His broad shoulders looked absolutely ridiculous, shuffling around under his denim coveralls. He took a step forward, his mud boots sinking into the black gumbo of the bayou that banked her garden. Off my yard, bud, now, she said, like she might have said, pick up that mess. Tired sounded mostly. Bud took another little step, his open arms eased and down, and Dahlia wriggled her big toe around in the ground, digging a hole. Otherwise, she was still, a five-foot statue in a wide hat and flower print dress. Her voice was steady and calm, her anger only apparent in how heavy her draw had become. Get back, I said. Like most of the women in Marty Paris, she'd been brought up with one figure, finger on a trigger, and the weight of the gun felt good in her hands, natural. But Bud was the sort of fool who figured she wouldn't use it, and he kept on walking. <laughs> Baby, give me that big old gun, he said, that grin of smear across his face. You know you ain't gonna shoot nobody. It was the same tone he'd taken the first time he'd lifted her shirt in high school, the both of them grinning back then. Anybody, it's anybody, you asshole. She looked down at the hole she'd made in the soil. Her father had his own proverbs, wisdoms only he knew. Nothing good ever grows from shotgun shells, he'd say, his arms often in the dirt but the brass gives roses color. The hole would do. Take another step, bud, really. Baby, you know I love you. His boots sucked at the ground. Dahlia pulled the trigger, smiled at bud, looking so damn surprised. Fuck off, she said, the sweetness of her drawl hanging on the words. She nudged the dispensed shell with her foot and sunk it deep into the dirt, pushing it into her little hole until it all but disappeared. She finished covering it, her foot sweeping and smoothing the moist earth. Only then did she look over at her husband's body, at the ragged hole the, bug shot, the buckshot had ripped through his chest, at the way the blood looked black as it pooled in the mud. She did a mimic of his little shrug and went inside the house to make a pot of coffee. It wasn't that she didn't believe Bud loved her. Honestly, he was the sort of dumb mutt that loved everyone. Therein lay the problem. She'd thrown him out when she realized that he was cheating on her, but like the old cur he was, he padded on back whenever he was hungry or lonely. He'd come over in his boat, pulling in next to her daddy's old one, a peace offering of fresh caught white perch and a half drained six pack in his worn hands. Even that she could live with, but he wasn't secret with his whore. She'd eventually met the girl at the Piggly Wiggly, the both of them in the parking lot, Dahlia's cart full of half a month of groceries, the girls holding only gin and tampons. She was a little bit short and dark like Dahlia, maybe 18, dumb like him, and built like a rolling river, waves of her spilling out of her baby blue hot pants. Still, Dahlia could stomach it, barely, but she could. The girl was a stripper, of course, across the river at Pinky's, somehow managing not to get tetanus or typhus as she crossed its parking lot slash junkyard. Dahlia knew the girl was just a symbol of everything that was wrong with Bud in his world and this town, and somehow managed not to hate the child, not really. She picked up her cell phone and watched the coffee drip. Her sister was sheriff, like their father had been, and was the only one to call. Mary, she said, the phone resting between ear and arm as she filled a little blue pitcher with cream and pulled out some china. I've shot Bud, 
you might want to come. After their father's death, Mary had let Dahlia keep the family home, but had stayed close by. Three acres down, she was Dahlia's nearest neighbor. On the other side, a few empty hunting camps leaned toward the ground, the timber heavy with humidity and neglect. Tangled woods choked with brush and dewberries stumbled around everything, slipping through and behind the sprawling lots. Only a gravel road in the bayou connected the homes, and in the thick of spring, even they seemed to get lost in the overgrowth. The coffee pot was hot and ready when Mary stepped into the kitchen. Without even a hello, Dahlia poured her a cup and they sat at the table. Keeping her gaze on the pitcher and off of Dahlia, Mary began spooning sugar in her cup. Like so many sisters, they were opposites and made for mismatched bookends. Mary was slim and tall, her daddy's girl, and wore rumpled jeans and a t-shirt. Her black boots, so normal everywhere else, looked out of place and clunky across from her sister's small, naked feet. Looks pretty bad out there, Mary said, finally making eye contact. The flies are gathering. I'd expect, it's at least 90. Really, Dee, Mary sounding sad now. What on earth possessed you to shoot Bud? He kept walking. Mary let the spoon clink against the glass as she stirred and stirred. Finally, she just said, they always do. No one was surprised when Mary'd run for sheriff. Dahlia sitting right behind her at every little speech. Marty was a small parish and everyone had known and loved their daddy. He was good people. Maybe not the most honest sheriff, but wasn't that the way? Honest and effective, need not go together, not in Louisiana and everyone understood Mary's need to avenge her father's murder. Unsolved and itching at them like a wound. She won easily enough despite being a woman, her black hair yanked into a ponytail, skin scrubbed clean of any makeup, and Dahlia behind her, bowing her head under the brim, the brim of a hat, touching her face with a tissue at the mention of their dad. I'm gonna stop there, keep us in time. Um, and that is the first few pages of Pinched Magnolias from Moon Trees and Other Orphans. <laughs>